In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Our entrance antiphon, the Lord said, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me and I will answer you and I will lead back your captives from every place. So as we gather today, um, our scriptures are, are kind of heavy and challenging, um, especially the gospel. Um, uh, 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 and I'll reflect a little more in a moment, but just pray f- uh, that we can truly experience Christ with us in any kind of time of affliction like we are experiencing with the pandemic and and the challenges it brings. And think of maybe bringing to the Eucharist those who really carry even heavier burdens than we and ask for God's mercy. And we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a scroll in the right hand of the one who sat on the throne. It had writing on both sides and was sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a mighty angel who proclaimed in a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to examine it. I shed many tears because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to examine it. One of the elders said to me, Do not weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed enabling him to open the scroll with its seven seals. Then I saw, standing in the midst of the throne, and the four living creatures and the elders, a lamb that seemed to have been slain. He had seven horns and seven eyes. These are the seven spirits of God sent out into the whole world. He came and received the scroll from the right hand of the one who sat on the throne. When he took it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each of the elders held a harp and gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of the holy ones. They sang a new hymn. Worthy are you to receive the scroll and break open its seals. For you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God those from every tribe and tongue, people and nation. You made them a kingdom and priests for our God, and they will reign on earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their Maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their King. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. 
Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The The Lamb Lamb has made made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. Let the faithful exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lamb has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus drew near Jerusalem, he, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If this day you only knew what makes for peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. For the days are coming upon you when your enemies will raise a palisade against you. They will encircle you and hem you in on all sides. They will smash you to the ground and your children within you, and they will not leave one stone upon another within you, because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I I feel like this is Another door number one, door number two time situation, but I don't really want to go separating the two doors um, or making a choice one or the other because um, I think they're both so true. Um, There really is a grieving, I think, that we're experiencing, you know, and just we've been experiencing. And and I think also the grief is when I think of Jesus as Jesus weeping over the city, it's like this... Um, intransigence on the part of the Pharisees and others to receive him. Um, and so there's this grief that comes from a sense of of our, our you know, and, and I was thinking about it as I was out on my back ride just before this, I don't know how much of it is they would not receive him or and how much of it was they could not receive him somehow. There was some, you know, and I think that's true for all of us. How much of it is we refuse the grace that's being offered. And I guess that's probably true if, if we're people of faith, that the grace is always there for us to choose what really will be for the best, uh, what will be best for us as a community and, and individually. But I think there's also some sense in which Jesus' grief is that they couldn't do it, that somehow there was something that held them back from receiving him. Um, and then there's the other side of the story, which is... Um, what we hear in the first reading in the responsorial psalm. The Lord has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God. So there's this, and, and, and the fact is that, you know, that I, I love, I, I don't think I've ever noticed this. I mean, this might be in the new translation of the, of the scriptures that's in our newer lectionary version, but um, it says here, Then I saw, standing in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures and the elders, a lamb that seemed to have been slain. And there was just something about that that was like, you know, later it does say, um, for you were slain and with your blood you purchased for God um, those from every tribe and tongue, people and nation. But there was this, there's this sense of, you know, he seemed to have been slain. He seemed to have been defeated. He seemed to have been... um, uh, overcome by the powers of the forces of evil but he wasn't you know and that's the word and so there's this there's a sense of you know in the gospel Jesus's powerlessness to be able to reach those for whom he came and then here there's this this triumph somehow that by his blood um, he has purchased for God us you know, the people that that he came for and that um, he made them a kingdom and priests for our God and they will reign on earth. So I feel like there's this tension that the scriptures offer us today, a tension that says, how can we um, grieve with Christ? 
um, the division that we experience in our nation, especially, and, and just the suffering that, you know, I, I was aware today I didn't read the email that came, um, but there's there there's so many people that are suffering. The email was about hurricane relief, and I suspect it was hurricane relief for the people of Central America. I'm not sure. Um, but I just think of... of and, and recently, another email came just inviting us to engage in the work of the Jesuit Refugee Services. And just kind of all those people that are, that are really um, experiencing um, the dramatic impact of, of major storms and, and of, of the storms that come from uh, other ways that we don't, we aren't, we, aren't, we aren't realizing the kingdom of God in our midst in a way that really does um, impact so many people seeking a, a safe place to live in and be um, safe in and you know allows them to to live lives um, where they they can realize their potential so there's this sense of there's there's the invitation to grieve and then there's somehow there's this invitation of Christ to say I've come I've conquered I, I'm, I'm, I have the graces there to, to, to experience the transformation that I desire for us so let's stand and pray. Let's pray that we um, just pray for all those people who really, really do um, experience extreme uh, suffering and, and for all of us in the ways that the, the division and polarization we experience is, is so um, impactful. Um, that somehow Christ, um, through his grace, can help transform us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let's pray for those, again, um, impacted by this double whammy of hurricanes that have hit Central America. Um, for all those, especially the very, very poor who are impacted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let's pray for our community at Regis Jesuit. Pray for all of us that we might make choices that truly will keep us safe as we enter into this time of Thanksgiving break. And um, for all those who especially need healing, um, physical healing, and for all those on the front lines, the healthcare workers, that they might be sustained in their work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for any other prayers you would like to add or just call to mind at this time. continue also to pray for all the, the for the Jesuit novices making the spiritual exercises and for Drew Kirschman and Larry Huck who direct them for God's blessing on them as they're in their ministry of direction we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for all those we have promised to pray for all those who are in our book of intentions for God's blessing on them and in the ways they need it we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayers and open our hearts more and more to the ways you want to bless us and transform us. And we pray all this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for in your goodness you have given us this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands that will become our bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for in your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, blessed be God, God forever. brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands. 
for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain for us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Holy Father, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to get, sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus himself took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, loving God, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Samuel our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, that we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. And all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Ignatius Loyola, St. John Francis Regis, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we might be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I leave you my peace. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. To be near God is my happiness, to place my hope in God the Lord. Pause for a moment to invite you, though, at home to make a spiritual communion, praying for a deep and abiding union with Christ and the desire to grow more and more to be like him. And let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May our good and loving God continually bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying God with our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.